The Church of the Broken God We've mentioned these machine-revering evangelists in a countless number of videos here on SCP Explained before, and it's because they're one of the most prolific groups of interest out there, with 300,000 active members across the globe that we know of. They likely have more members and devotees than other iconic groups of interest, like the Serpent's Hand and the various cults of the Scarlet King combined. But how much do we really know about the Church of the Broken God? We've consulted Foundation historians and Mechanite scripture to find the answers and put together a truly comprehensive overview of this complex and often misjudged faction of the SCP Foundation multiverse. A faction that the Foundation may one day find themselves far more closely aligned with than they ever imagined to face an even greater foe. Give glory to the Broken God and let us begin our journey into his teachings. The Church of the Broken God is a slightly more centralized group than the Serpent's Hand, though that really isn't saying much. They're split into three overall subgroups over a series of schisms that we'll delve deeper into later. The Broken Church, the Cogwork Orthodox Church, and the Church of Maxwellism. Before we get into the differences between these three groups, let's take a quick look at what unites them. All splinter cells of the Church worship the technological deity Mechane, known by many names, the most popular of which is the Broken God or Goddess. They all believe that Mechane was split into pieces and is lying dormant. They all revere machinery and technology over flesh, which they view as broken, weak, or corrupt. And without exception, all of them are the sworn mortal enemies of the Sarkists. Just for context, the Sarkists are the perfect equals and opposites to the Church of the Broken God. Under the leadership of the God King Grand Karsist Ion and finding their origins in Mechane's counterpart, the primal and flesh-based Yaldabaoth, the Sarkists worship and revere the base concepts of flesh, corruption, and disease, despising everything that the Church stands for. It is important to make note of these facts, given just how much of the Church of the Broken God's history is defined by their conflicts with the Sarkists. More on that later. The Broken Church is the oldest and most traditional of these three main sects. They are led by a man named Robert Bomaro, a Mechanite holy man who, in 1946, just after the Seventh Occult War, ascended from a mere collector of church-based anomalous trinkets to the title of Builder of God after imbibing in SCP-217, also known as God's Ichor, and his broken blood. Of all the church sects, the Broken Church is the most invested in conducting worship through active efforts to reconstruct the Broken God and bring about McCain's second coming. Of course, those of you who are familiar with SCP-001, the Ouroboros Cycle, will know that this sometimes has mixed results. After commissioning a counterfeit heart from the sinister folks at the factory, the Broken Church's most notable attempt at a full Mechane resurrection went horrifically wrong, resulting in a huge mechanical abomination that tore its way across Mexico, devouring everything it could until eventually being brought down by SCP-2399 a giant space cannon known as the Malfunctioning Destroyer. Anyway, now for a sect with a slightly less overtly destructive method of worshipping Mechane, the Cogwork Orthodox Church, whom you may remember as the ones who gave Alexei Velotrov sanctuary after he was eventually freed from SCP Foundation containment. These worshippers innovated a practice known as standardization, which involved undergoing mechanical enhancement in order to appear closer to their maker. However, we aren't talking about sleek, technologically advanced cyborg parts here. The religious aesthetic of the Cogwork Orthodox is heavily inspired by the Industrial Revolution, with an emphasis on components such as gears or cogs. As such, members of the Church who have undergone extensive modifications to remake themselves in the image of their god will often make loud ticking or tapping sounds, leading to the derogatory nickname, Tickers, often used among the other two sects. However, a major advantage of the church is that it is heavily organized and regulated from the top down, with rigid systems and strict rules against electrical or digital technology. Think of them as Catholicism to the broken church's Protestantism. The Cogwork Orthodoxy keeps to themselves, but we do know a great deal about their internal command structures. The orders of the Cogwork Orthodox Church are as follows. At the very top of the pyramid are the Patriarchs, 
a mysterious and insular group who have the ultimate word on church matters, and release missives that will later become the Schema, the church's holy text. Below them are the Schematists' faithful, scholars and scribes who write and record the Schema from the aforementioned teachings and commands of the patriarchs. The Gates' faithful are the internal affairs orders of the Cogwork Orthodox Church. They investigate matters going on within the faith, such as weeding out heretics and meditating internal disputes. They're one of the two orders permitted to carry weapons, the others being militants faithful, who act as the self-defense wing, keeping the church safe from external threats and acting as ambassadors to outside groups. The next two orders are the fabricators faithful and the inventors faithful. The fabricators act as foremen who oversee production on church properties, ensuring that only the finest quality is achieved. That's because, in addition to standardization, the Cogwork Orthodox Church believes that mass production of items using Industrial Revolution methods is also a viable form of worship for Mekane. This brings us to the inventors. They come up with new methods and designs for standardization and go on quests and explorations to discover the answers to any questions the church may have. But our information on the Cogwork Orthodox Church doesn't end there. Thanks to their truly extensive writings, we even know about the multitude of saints that the Church reveres and their various purposes to followers of the Church. For example, Saint Legate Trunion. She was the sneaky and covert patron saint of the Legate's faithful. There was also Saint Schematis Platon. She's the patron saint of the written word, of editors, of timetables, and of diagrammatic organization. Patron saint of the inventor's faithful, of designers, of repairmen, and of cognition engines. Saint Scranton, patron saint of spatial fabric manipulation, higher dimension mathematics, and anthracite coal extraction. Saint Fabricator Baffle, patron saint of workflow and the assembly line. Saint Inventor Chalk, patron saint of chorists. And Saint Inventor and Richner, patron saint of the Entelechided. They have a pretty rigid structure and extensively recorded mythology is what we're saying here, just in case that didn't come across. This brings us to the Church of Maxwellism, the newest and smallest of the sects, as well as the least combative. However, they pose the greatest threat of all to the SCP Foundation's quest to maintain a veneer of normality. That's because Maxwellists forego the extensive standardized body modifications of the Church of the Cogwork Orthodox, and instead prefer smaller internal implants that allow them to interface directly with the internet from their brains. This allows them to fulfill their primary goal, spreading the good word of Mekain, whom they refer to as WAN, all across the globe using the Information Superhighway, while also netting them the nickname Hummers among the other two sects. In contrast to the conformist elements of their sister organizations, Maxwellists embrace their individuality and unique traits, being highly decentralized but very communicative with their fellow believers. They believe Wan is a fragmented god, existing in the world of digitized data rather than clunky old hardware. With their extreme internet savvy, it's likely that they've brought in many new converts to the broken god's cause, despite them being the youngest of all the overall religion sects. But now we have an overview of the state of the Church of the Broken God today, and we must ask ourselves a second question. How did we get here? What is the history of the Church? To find the answer, we need to go back. Before the modern era. Before the SCP Foundation. Before even humanity itself. It begins when Mekain and Yadabath created humanity. Yadavath created the bodies of human beings, primal sensual creatures driven by base instincts and urges, and Mekain gave them their minds, reasonable, logical, and compassionate. For a time, the two would preside over mankind in harmony, but things would not stay that way forever. One of the earliest civilizations that the Foundation discovered interacting with these two deities was the anomalous Shah Dynasty, sometimes also referred to as the Shah Culture Group which reigned in China from 2100 to 1600 BCE, though the only sources that confirm the very existence of the Xia dynasty are anomalous. It was here that we heard the first whispers of the cult of the Broken God. To the Xia dynasty, the being we would later call Mekane was known as the Father Serpent Fuxi, and Yadabath was known as Mother Dragon Nyowa. 
Because the Xia dynasty was anomalous all the way down, scholars of Father Serpent Fuxi were said to practice the Way of the Serpent, as he has always been associated with knowledge. The Way of the Serpent involved undergoing a physical transformation into a snake-like being to better resemble the deity, much like how modern cogwork Orthodox Church followers try to reshape their bodies to better resemble their creator today. According to Xia dynasty scripture, which would form the basis of the entire belief system of all sects of the church, Fusi broke down his own body and transformed himself into a brass cage around Mother Dragon Nyola. However, unlike later iterations of the faith, the Xia dynasty believed it was extremely important to see that the body of Fusi is never rebuilt, because to do so would lead to the release of Mother Dragon Nyola and the end of the world. The civilization was started by a mythic figure known as the Yellow Emperor, who led the Xia dynasty to defeat other Fusi and Nyowa worshippers, then folding them into their own culture. Like many civilizations touched by Mekane, the Xia dynasty was incredibly scientifically advanced and skilled with metalworking. There's even evidence that the Xia dynasty created their own forms of the computer with effective artificial intelligence, as well as reality warping devices and even devices capable of interstellar travel. While the illustrious Xia dynasty would now be brought to its knees by a race of creatures known only as the Golden Crows, the next iteration of Broken God Ancestors would be far closer to the worshippers we'd recognize today. This was the beginning of the Mechanite Empire, and by extension, the First War of the Flesh, the legendary extended conflict between the Mechanites and the Sarkists in the ancient world. Broken God cults were detected in Mycenaean Greece, a Greek civilization spanning the years 1600 to 1100 BCE. It was here where the Broken God first took up the name Mechane, and eventually he amassed enough followers to allow the theocratic Mechanite Empire to truly be born, and it would remain in power from 1200 to 1000 BCE. Much like the church in the modern day, the Mechanite Empire saw the marriage of theocracy, politics, and classical military dictatorship. And much like the Shah dynasty before it, it was marked by both tight structure and control, as well as incredible metallurgic production and technological advancement, partly due to considering all of these to be holy acts. They had strong strategic relations with Egypt, Assyria, and Canaan, and their mix of commercial strength and a dominant naval presence gave them serious geopolitical standing, even if their highly evangelical attitude didn't always win them friends on the world stage. A number of roots for modern Church of the Broken God beliefs were clearly established here, including the paradigm shift from wanting to avoid Mekane's rebuilding to expediting the rebuilding. Texts made around this time were also the first to contain references to the name Wan as an alternate title for Mekane, revealing the basis for later Maxwellist practices in the modern day. However, as we alluded to before, despite these incredible advancements, the true ravages of the First War of Flesh were upon the Mechanites here. The Sarkists, who had established the Adium Empire, were on the offensive. Thanks to Grand Karsist Ion and his Karsist minions, the Karsists, by the way, were high-level followers of Sarkicism capable of performing flesh magic, the Sarkis forces were more powerful than ever before. They had mobilized their troops and brought in trump cards the likes of which the Mechanites had never seen before. Giant flesh beasts that acted as living siege weapons, Human warriors turned into deadly monsters with Sarkic magic, and the most deadly of all, a bioweapon that the Mechanites called the Red Death at the time, though we know it better as the flesh that hates. As is often the case in war, this led to unprecedented advancements in technology on the side of the Mechanites too. The most notable example perhaps being SCP-2406, an incredible weapon of war known as the Colossus which made for a formidable tool against the teeming forces of the Adium Empire. However, the advancements on both sides only made the war all the more brutal, with scores dying on both sides and both empires being severely weakened as the conflict stretched on. Things got so desperate for the Mechanites that they even joined forces with the infamously ruthless and savage Davites, the worshippers of the Scarlet King, to defeat the Sarkists. The decisive battle of the First War of Flesh was the Siege of Gyros, the Sarkic capital of Greece, where Mechanites eventually breached the stronghold and slaughtered the Karsists within. Another missive sent from the Sarkist field commander Karsist Tundas read, Grand Karsist Ion, 
May this missive find you at Kaithira, for it shall be my last. Our enemies have begun their assault on the island. The fallen kingdoms and followers of Mekane have united against us, even as their nations crumble. The wounds sustained today will heal. Into the ages of ages we are undying. I vow that none are to leave this island alive. We summon the Red Death for the blood of heathens. We sacrifice ourselves. We will meet again in Editum. But while the Mechanite Empire won the war, they didn't survive it. Due to the people lost and the resources expended, the Empire fully collapsed shortly afterwards. Some survivors renounced their Mechanite faith and entered other cultures. Some splintered off to preach and practice mechanism elsewhere. The remainder settled on the secretive island of Amini to form their own city-state. Here they replenished their numbers and forces over the centuries, maintaining secrecy to avoid intervention from outsiders and vengeful sarcasts. By the 6th century BCE, the Mechanites from the city-state of Amini were developing a degree of regional power once more, thanks to the boon provided by their advanced technology. They were no longer a military powerhouse, but the tiny state instead became a trade juggernaut, providing mechanical goods and weapons to nearby civilizations that in turn provided the protection that the Mechanites so sorely required. Their cultures would later be influenced by the Roman Empire and various Pythagorean cults, who inspired a love of numerology and cosmic harmony in this ancient civilization returning shakily to its feet. The 5th century BCE became known as the Golden Age of Mechanite literature, and the state continued to grow through military alliances with the Achaemenid Empire and the Kingdom of Carthage. However, the city-state of Amini was eventually wiped out for good in the 1st century BCE. Followers of the Broken God faith remained, but they were scattered to the wind for almost 2,000 years until the Industrial Revolution struck the Western world. Seeing the great machines of industry rise up seemingly overnight convinced the lingering cells of broken god worshippers that perhaps, after a millennia, McCain was now preparing to return. They assembled into what is now known as the Broken Church and began preaching the good word. And considering the industrial fever of raw, unfettered progress gripping the world at the time, the Gospel of Mechain seemed to be an attractive prospect indeed. Meanwhile, debate was raging inside the ever-growing church about the nature of adapting oneself mechanically, a practice that had been out of fashion since the days of the original Mechanites. Broken church loyalists believed that modification through any means other than drinking the god's ichor, like Robert Bermaro would later do, is an insult to Mechain. Others, however, saw it as a tribute and a way of getting closer to their creator. This was the issue that caused the first New Age Schism and led to the formation of the Cogwork Orthodox Church during the 1840s. The faith would never be the same after this. The various broken god splinter cells found a lucrative market in converting wealthy industrial oligarchs of the production boom and talking them into becoming glorified sugar daddies for their various new augmentation experiments, all to becoming post nibanic beings meaning mechanical entities who leave the unreliable world of flesh behind for good and commune with the shiny metal infinite. In exchange, these industrialists would be provided with advanced mechanite knowledge of manufacturing as well as technology far beyond their years. Everyone was a winner, well, except the SCP Foundation, but we'll touch on that whole debacle soon. By the closing of the 19th century, it seemed like the Cogwork Orthodox Church might totally outmode its predecessors at the Broken Church. However, the early 20th century would bring the mysterious Robert Bomero onto the scene. Bomero was a mysterious man with unknown abilities and connections, but he soon commanded power and respect, taking over the Broken Church and even being taken seriously in rival sects. He gathered up a group of trusted enforcers and augmented them into his disciples, supposedly being able to speak directly to Mekain. He and his loyalists collected hundreds of artifacts relating to the Broken God, blowing the minds of all involved with just how quickly he was able to do so. He disappeared in 1943 and was gone for three years, during which time he conducted the famous God's Icar ceremony and returned to his people as the self-styled Builder of God. This made him an even more esteemed figure across the world of the Broken God, a kind of Pope of Mekane, supposedly bearing a direct line of contact with the Divine. 
there would be a defining schism in the late 20th century that produced the Church of Maxwellism, as some wished to move beyond the outdated dogma of the Cogwork Orthodox Church, and began administering electronic augmentations rather than just analog machinery. This resulted in a huge controversy for church members, as the patriarchs reacted swiftly with a slew of excommunications. Those excommunicated would soon become the first wave of Maxwellists, and take the tenets of the broken god into the internet age. All of these groups have made trouble for the Foundation in their own way. From the online evangelizing of Maxwellists leaking classified knowledge, to the weirdness of the cogwork tickers being impossible to ignore, to the frequent battles between the Foundation and the broken church over items which they believe to be parts of Mekain. However, if certain prophecies are to be believed, the relationship between the Foundation and the Church won't remain frosty forever. One day, perhaps they'll even stand metal to fleshy shoulder beside the Sarkis too, against a threat far more dangerous than all of them combined. Now go check out SCP-2217 Hammer and Anvil and SCP-001 The Broken God or Borocycle for more on the fascinating Church of the Broken God.